Okay, we're resuming. All right, so this was the last question which we were discussing. And uh, the next question that is coming up after this giant cell arteritis is this question. Uh, this is a little small facts about the giant cell arteritis. And, you know, yeah, you can see it, it can be uh, correlated with polymyalgia rheumatica. A interesting fact about polymyalgia rheumatica um, than giant cell arteritis than many other conditions like you know drug induced myopathy there's another condition and and there is a dermatomyositis my quick question uh, do you know how to differentiate in the main exam because there was a relevant questions like that so do you want me to tell that one or do you guys know how to differentiate between these three conditions like um, there's often a question given so if you want me to discuss that one please do let me know in the comment section so what is that uh, particular thing i'm talking about i'm talking about uh, yeah, so discussing CLAB recalls in uh, February 2022 recalls we discuss, and you know we're going with live interaction and uh, we already give you tips how to solve last six years when the collections are given. Uh, CLAB hot topics last week, you know, first we show you, but we'll give you demonstration on the fourth day how to use it, and lastly CLAB more. Now we have been discussing a few things, and yeah, here we go. So. Topic was proximal muscle myopathy. Okay. The topic is a proximal muscle myopathy. And the conditions I was asking dermatomyositis, polymyalgia, rheumatica, and lastly, drug induced myositis. Drachyosinous myositis is like steroid or aterovastatin. All of them shares a common thing that is called this proximal muscle myopathy. Like example, what? Like combing. Female do 100 times a day, maybe. Just joking, no offense. Then for us, like, you know, maybe buttoning the upper button or, you know, I'm sitting on a chair, getting up from the chair. Okay, so all these things are related to proximal muscle myopathy. But do you really know how to differentiate between them or do you want me to discuss that one? Please do let me know in the comment section if you want me to discuss this part or if you want, if you already know this part, I can move forward to the next session. That's a little bit sporty. Okay, maybe you guys know this part. Okay, maybe moving to the next session would be good. Great. Please do let me know in the comment section, guys. You know, some of you I don't know. I mean, why not using like Dr. Asma, Dr. Amana, like you know, is it like Dr. Kushan? Some of you are very mute. I mean, nothing actually mentioning. Um, I mean, try to interact at least a little bit you know, uh, what do you want actually? And some of you can see just commenting as a AAP. So do you really know, like, you know, this is a basic thing. Like, you know, if you can just tell, like, you know, you know, or you don't know, you know. So, because, you know, we also, as a tutor, we don't, we don't find class interesting. You know, we try to finish in just quickly in that case, actually. So you need to be a little sporty in that case, actually. I know you did iftar and all this thing, but, you know, I also uh, fasting the whole day, right? So, if you just can type one thing, you know, I know it or like this thing, this is is a is a thing like, you know, as I'm mentioning that, you know, you need to be more, you know, a bit extrovert in this field, actually. You must be good in your own zone and the thing, but here you have to be a little bit sporty. All right. Okay. So to Dr. Sneed, so uh, I'm clear, please, like some of the others, please do let me know, you know, uh, otherwise I may cut down your live transmission after some time. If you're not, you know, you know, responding, I may cut down the transmission from you. Like, because what is the point of coming to live classes then? Right. You can see, just see the recording in that case. Right. Okay. Next is if you see, yes, sir. And, you know, this is the CK. All right. Thus, guys, you know, sometimes we tell these things just to make sure that, you know, you study well, you participate well. No offense, actually. All right. Now, I was telling that lab is important here. Lab is important here. So in the lab, in the lab, 
dermatomyositis or also known as polymyositis means everything raised means in this case what we see we see you know esr raised also ck is raised this is interesting next coming is polymyalgia rheumatica only ck raised and this remains okay all right this is for the polymyalgia rheumatica so you see ck is not raised in polymyalgia rheumatica Last but not the least, drug induced myositis. Yes, sir, remains okay, means normal. CK also remains okay. All right. So these are the particular findings as a lab will be given in the exam, but all of them share a common thing proximal muscle myopathy. Now, please do let me know in the comment section is this information is new or you already knew it? Okay. So this is something as a feedback. Please do let me know. All right. All right. Moving forward to the next question. Yes. All right. Moving forward to the next question. A 26 years old domain with ulcerative colitis presents with bleeding per rectum. Full blood count shows you know, hemoglobin 8.4 gram per deal. What is the most appropriate treatment in this case? So ulcerative colitis is the diagnosis. When we quickly scan the question, we see ulcerative colitis and hemoglobin is a bit low. We can also see that. Now, which one is the most appropriate treatment in that case? Ulcerative colitis is present breeding per rectum. In that case, well done, guys. Very good answer. Very impressive. Steroid is the answer. So you guys all raised well done of the answer. I thought like, you know, some of you answer mesalazine and all this thing. Very well done answer. Now, correct answer is a steroid. Presented case is a case of acute severe ulcerative colitis. See, ulcerative colitis you may find in the exam in many form. It can be acute flare-up condition. If you find acute flare-up condition, your answer will be always steroid, actually. If you find mild to moderate but not acute flare-up, then mesalazine can be the answer. All right. And later, you know, there's options for azathioprine and all this thing you can also use. All right. So this is few information for ulcerative colitis, very, you know, large scale things actually. Did you know interesting thing that, you know, smoking reduces the chance of ulcerative colitis, same as Parkinsonism. Very interesting facts actually. Now, if anyone is a smoker here, you know, maybe happy, something, you know, relieving. Okay, at least smoking is not giving something fun apart. All right. Next is a question, you know, I think a bit incomplete recall. I know we figured out this recall was just given palliative guy as like the recaller mentioned, palliative guy with obstruction with Parkinson's actually, and treatment is probably cyclizing. So we found it, you know, terrible recall actually while collecting that one. So we figured out what has came before. So we brought one of the previous one, actually. If you see it, some of our last two, three years, this is one of them were tested. So we brought in another complete one for you. A patient presented with a ovarian carcinoma widespread, a metastatic case looks like that's why the palliative management is going on. She has a bowel obstruction, severe colic for two hours, normal for three hours, in between severe pain. What is the management? Subcutaneous morphine, antispasmodic, palliative colostomy. Now, this kind of thing, you know, because of obstruction, we can do even some surgery. Now, did you know, even we can do surgery, when you can do surgery to relieve pain. For so example, liver carcinoma, metastatic liver cancer, we can do small short surgery to relieve the pain. Did you know this? Even in palliative care counseling, you know, somebody you go to the PLAP2 and palliative patient counseling, you know, you give a lot of options. And in those options, you know, there will be, in those options, there will be palliative surgeries also included, actually. This if, you know, we'll try with painkiller and, you know, some of the other things. If these are not working, don't worry, we have palliative surgery also available. So palliative colostomy will give you temporary relief in that case, actually. Great. Uh, a lot of question in future uh, can come from the dementia. Uh, do let me know if is your conceptions are clear with the topic dementia. Dementia, I mean to say uh, some conditions, Alzheimer's, then there is Parkinson's, then there is Lewy body dementia. Okay, this and there is a vascular dementia and, you know, there's uh, pre-owned diseases. Okay, there can be many other causes of dementia can be included, but these five often comes in the main exam. 
Okay, someone asking the previous question to be repeated. Okay, this one, this one, they have obstruction feature. No, summary here is a obstructive features because of cancer. So you remove that obstruction, remove it. This removal is not a treatment. This is mainly like a palliative. Okay, to relieve it, to relieve it. Is it clear now, my dear? Great. It is basically to relieve it actually, not like a, this is the treatment of, this is not a treatment of ovarian cancer, right? This was not a treatment of ovarian cancer. Ovarian cancer is a different treatment. Like you remove the ovarian, blah, blah, these things. But we are doing something else. Why? To relieve that particular obstruction. So this is part of palliative then. Now, coming to the question uh, about dementia, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, Lewy body, vascular and prion. Is your conception is clear on this one? How to separate? Because one question from dementia is almost 99%. I'm sure you will get in the main exam. Did you really know how to differentiate between these four or five forms of dementia? All right. Is it clear or do you want me to uh, highlight these particular things? Or do you want me to highlight these particular things? Please do let me know in the comment section in that case. Okay. Topic is a dementia. Okay, first comes is Alzheimer's. Guys, you try to participate. Alzheimer's, what are the key features? Normally, first we see in the question, is it quick or is it slow? So we found progressive. This word you will find. So progressive forgetfulness, progressive dementia. Then we see some associations. Is there any association in Alzheimer's? Yes, you might find Down syndrome, duodenal atresia, these associated feature, even leukemia history can be present. Some Then it's also important to see what is the stage or grading of dementia. Is there a grade one, two, three, or four of the dementia? Or is this person, you know, uh, forget the family members? What does it mean? It means, you know, it's a severe dementia because if it is a severe dementia, severe Alzheimer's, is the treatment would be the same? No, it will not be the same. Means what? Normally, in case of Alzheimer's disease, our treatment options are for mild to moderate, mild to moderate. I hope you are writing, guys. Mild to moderate treatments are donepezil, galantamine, then, then there is a rivastigmine, rivastigmine. All right. And if we count as a severe dementia, then, you know, treatment is a mimantamine. Okay, so this is already important. Like, why are they forgetting totally the child, totally the family members? Then it is a great almost four, right? So in that case, you know, mimantamine would be the treatment. If Alzheimer's with cardiac problem, so Alzheimer's plus cardiac problem, then what is the treatment? Then the answer is a reverse treatment. Donipazil, we don't give it. It's almost like cholinergic activities happens. So we don't give that one. Correct? So these are a lot of things to learn. So Alzheimer's and these are the certain things to learn in Alzheimer's dementia. But, you know, progressive dementia is one of them. Then it can be grateful, grateful by forgetting the family member faces. And you need to learn lastly, what are the drugs using in dementia? Just now mentioned the four drugs that's been used. Uh, many other drugs in also in trial, maybe a hundred of drugs are in trial for Alzheimer's, but these are so far some of the drugs that has been in use a lot actually. All right. Sometimes some hypothetical question comes like a patient, maybe a patient are very close with the doctors in those countries coming to you and asking you about the trial suggestions. Doctor, should I go to the trial? Should I take my mom to the trial? What will be your answer? You tell about the pros and cons about the trial, but don't give decision. You suggest uh, to go to the trial. What do you think? So this is an ethical question, correct? So what will be your answer, my dear doctors, in that case? You suggest the patient to choose a trial because some trials are very useful, or you just tell about the pros and cons about the trial. Final answer is that you just tell about the pros and cons about the trial. We don't suggest anyone to go to the trials, actually, okay? As a doctor, you can't tell that one. You just tell about the pros and cons about the trial. Give information about what is trial. Trial means, you know, there can be placebo can be used, right? Does all the trial has, you know, treatments? What do you think, guys? Let's see your idea about trials. For so example, Alzheimer's trial is going on. All the patients are getting treatment. What do you think? All these patients are getting the actually treatment or some of them are getting placebo as well. 
answer. Some many of them are giving just plus above, nothing inside. Okay, so you just see, you know, how it goes actually with the trial. So you also need to tell the patient this particular thing. So these are some certain other things you just need to learn. Next, next thing is a coming is a vascular dementia. Now my quick question is vascular dementia is progressive or sudden? Is vascular dementia is progressive sudden? Yes, it is a medical legal issue, the previous one, correct. In that case, it will be a sudden and there must be a history of pre-existing issues. What pre-existing, pre-existing MI, pre-existing atrial fibrillation or something. That's why there is vascular stroke and that is the reason the patients are having some sort of um, sudden, you know, dementia, sudden forgetfulness. Okay. And they might be associated with headache because some strokes are going on and they have a pre-existing uh, issues. So what you do need to do next is very, very important. You go for some CT or MRIs and to find out what is really going on. Okay. Some cases there can be history of fall. Okay. Because suddenly happen, you know, and the patient become unconscious, patient often fall down. Okay. So that can be a feature in case of vascular dementia. Your CT scan will tell you if there is any stroke or any small lacunar stroke. Okay, any stroke can also lead to vascular dementia. Next thing is coming is a Parkinson's dementia. From Parkinson's actually came to this one. How do you understand? Is it progressive or sudden? Answer, it is progressive. It is progressive. Great. And there can be family history. Okay, one thing I forgot to add here in Alzheimer's, there will be also family history. More common. This is more prominent than even vascular. Vascular also can have family history. So a lot of these cases actually family history is so common, but most common probably in Alzheimer's. Now this test is even available. You can literally do test and you get to know that there, there is, you have chances or not. But many of, many of us may not like it doing a test that, you know, we are going to have a Alzheimer's, you know, we'll be sad in that case actually, right? You remember the very uh, famous actor, you know what? Who, I think I forgot his name. You know, uh, the very you know attractive person according to the Time magazine. You know the uh, the actor of Thor. You know with the, you know the I think this particular movies. I forgot his name actually. So you know he got tested because of his family has issues, and he also get to know he has this uh, genetic association or positive. So he might develop uh, this. Alzheimer's more early stage, maybe by 50 you will have. So he might have only now uh, seven, eight years actually. So he got very um, depressed in between actually and he stopped much working. He tried to enjoy his life in elsewhere, All right. So that's the thing about the Alzheimer's, you know, can be dangerous actually. Now test, lot of screening test is available for this Alzheimer's. Now, anyways, come back to this one, progressive family history, Parkinson's. Now, how many time it takes for Parkinson's to develop. So it is said more than one year. Why I'm saying this later, I will tell you. Okay. Last but not the least, there is a drug of list of drug for dementia and these drugs causing interaction which or what or not. So this is the drug, sorry, related to dementia. Sorry, related to Parkinson's. Drug related to Parkinson's. Clear everyone? So we shortly understand BALSA balsa. As I remember, the many other mnemonic you will find, whatever way you like, you use them. These are the drug related to um, Parkinson's. Okay, and please do read and Google it about the Parkinson's drug side effects. I have seen question coming about that actually. For example, uh, levido reticularis. Levido reticularis is a side effect of amantadine. Right, just giving you an example. Last but not the least, there is a, another very popular one is a Lewy body dementia. Another one is a Lewy body dementia. Let me show you that one. Okay, this part has little difficulty. Okay, we can write that part. So in Lewy body dementia, is it also progressive or not? It is more faster. You can write one point. It is probably more faster than uh, this Parkinson's actually. Lewy body dementia more faster than 
Parkinson's. Family history, I mean, not that significant, but there can be history present, but not as significant as Alzheimer's. Then previously I said it takes more than a year for Parkinson's to develop. In Lewy body dementia, below one year it developed. And a special feature, who knows, let's see, like, you know, the one of the feature of Lewy body dementia, and that one is visual hallucination. A key feature is a visual hallucination. Okay, very important to remember. And you know, some of the drugs, same as like the Parkinson's drug. You can use this Parkinson's drug for Lewy body. Remember one thing for Parkinson's and Lewy body dementia, they have similar features. Only differentiating point is a visual hallucination. And some key features like fascinated gait, like they have this interesting gait. Like, have you seen the robotic dancing or robotic walk? So they have some kind of uh, walking like this. It is called rigidity. Okay, so fascinated gait, rigidity, cogwheel rigidity, their movement is restricted. We call it bradykinesia. Correct? So these are some of the key features. Like these are some of the triode in case of Parkinson's. The so same goes with the Lewy body, but differentiating point is a visual hallucination. Everyone clear about these conditions? Dementia, guys. Yeah, so this type of you know, important things, guys, you need to see our, you know, PLAB hot topics. It will be very useful if you see your PLAB hot topics. There's already dementia topic is present there among those 150. Okay, guys, moving forward to the next question. Great. I hope this is in between discussions are useful for you. Eight-year-old child came with asthma attack every month has for last 12 months, every month for last. This is the indication what is the state of the asthma. Like if you are having monthly asthma or weekly asthma, it indicates where is your state. Also, he is taking inhalated salvitamol. So taking inhalated salvitamol regularly and still every month he is getting attack. My quick question, is it under control? Is it under control? Taking inhalated salbutamol and but every month having attack. Is it under control? No, right? So you need to step up the management. Now, people get confused in two options. We understand you need to introduce a steroid here. So we have the fruticasone here and we have the salbutamol here. So guys, now my question is, what do you think? You want to go with the fruticasone only or it's a combination is better? Okay. So in that case, it's a combination better, right? Or most asthma treatment, it's a combination often. So salbutamol, fruticasone combination, not like we just give uh, fruticasone and we stop salbutamol, no. So combo is good in case of most asthma treatment. Like next time, whenever you heard about asthma in general life, think about, you know, as a combination treatment. Like and if it's a known case of asthma, just think before checking the prescription, there could be a combination treatment given. Okay, great. So this is the C is the answer. So combination or combo is okay. There is a things like a stepwise management of asthma, like initially mild salbutamol, moderate salbutamol, and you know there's a combination of steroid. You can see these steroid names as a combination in severe cases. Now, how do you understand severe? Severe, there will be weekly attacks. Here we see monthly attack. So less than six weeks apart. If there is so monthly attack is a moderate. So our case was moderate. So we give salbutamol and we also give the steroid as a combination actually. So this is a step of management. And in severe cases where there will be weekly symptoms, not only weekly symptoms, also nocturnal symptoms. Very dangerous. Remember one thing, nocturnal symptom of asthma is always very dangerous. I can tell you a short story in one minute. You know, when we're taking the respiratory uh, medicine training, one of my colleague was telling that, he wished he could have saved a patient. What happened actually, you know, um, you know, we all have uh, our relative in the villages and all these things. So one time, you know, he got called at the night, you know, he was a bit busy. He said, you know, the drugs I give, take that one or go to the city for the treatment. So thing happened. Our professor was telling a topic. So from where he was telling these lines, professor was telling never ignore a night symptom of asthma. Okay, so he got called around 10. He was busy in chamber and I just said, quickly give the treatment. He didn't take it seriously. He thought like, you know, the patient knows everything. So the patient didn't went to the city in that case. All right. And he said like, you know, use your inhaler and, you know, go to the city, take nebulizer and all this thing. 
So what he just has missed, what one simple treatment he could have saved his life. What do you think? Let's see your idea. What simple uh, treatment that is also available in the local pharmacy could have saved that patient's life. And, you know, next day, the patient was dead, actually. And, you know, because there's a villager, so they don't have the spacer, actually. You know, you mentioned a nice point, the spacer, actually. So, you know, when you have acute attack, is your... Um, in this simple meter dose inhaler are effective, not much effective because it does not go to the lung base. So you need a spacer actually. So what was missed here actually giving a tablet prednisolone. He forgot to mention that. He was saying go to the city, so nebulizing form and injection hydrocortisone, which is the you know mainstay. But there is a level of evidence. Oral steroid and IV hydrocortisone according to Zena guideline, UK. Zena is the main guideline for asthma. See, according to Zena guideline, oral prednisolone and IV hydrocortisone, similar efficacy. Okay, very interesting. Then nebulized adrenaline, uh, sorry, nebulized, nebulizer, you know, anything you are giving. And also, if you're giving something um, that, you know, kind of like oral prednisolone is almost similar efficacy. Also, give, using a spacer, using a spacer or also nebulizer, also similar efficacy level evidence. So spacer is almost similar efficacy as like hospital treatment, right? So if you use the spacer at home, if you get prednisolone tablet, no asthma patient will die at home. Did you know many asthma patient uh, died at home every year because of lack of idea, patient has the you know, uh, some inhibition to go to the hospital, take proper care. Then everyone has the thought, okay, I'll go to the hospital in the morning. Okay. So when they have the attack, so quickly go to the emergencies and all this thing. All right. I hope this is important information. Coming to the, this thing, this was an incomplete question. So I have to bring it separate question, which looks more common, actually. Let's go and find out this one. All right. A 23-year-old referred to the emergency department for demolition of side accident on a beam fell on him and pinned by the chest. This is a radiology finding. I'll show you one time how the radiology finding looks like. Five more seconds. This part has clear findings. This part also has finding. Hope you can guess what is it. He speak uh, clear airway, able to speak you in grasp. His blood pressure, this, this, that. Air entry diminish of the right side of chest. This is the most key point, guys. Air entry, which has been reduced in the right side of the chest. Very important. CT scan showing bilateral refracture, blah, blah, this thing, and showing small hemo pneumothorax. After the CT scan, his breathing has become labored. So labor breathing, bad news. Granting for children, bad news. These are the bad news. So breathing has become leopard, not a good news. It shows sign of paradosal respiration of the chest wall retraction during inspiration. So during inspiration, more pain. So what do you think about the diagnosis first? What is your diagnosis, my dear doctors? First, tell me a diagnosis. Then we'll go and find out what is it. Okay, great. So, what is the diagnosis in that case? The diagnosis actually is a flyal chest. Diagnosis is a flyal chest. So, pneumo, hemothorax, and rib fracture all together. So, you can see this rib fracture. It is a flyal chest case. Isn't it? What is the management of flyal chest? Is it the only water seal drain is here, the management? Or is it the only analgesic? Or is it like a uh, intubation? Or is it like a CPAP? So what do you think is the ideal in this case? Okay, very tricky, guys. Please think sensibly. I'll give you 10 seconds. All right. Some choose E. Let's see what others are choosing. Come on, guys. We don't have that kind of time. Okay, some said analgesic first. Well done. That's a good answer. Very good answer. Let's see the final answer.
Okay, so in that case, our answer is the intermittent positive pressure ventilation, IPPV, right? That is like, you know, most, most important. So you see, frail chest is nothing but, you know, ribs are broken into, you know, multiple pieces. This is the thing. Now, why we choose D? That can be an interesting question, that why we choose this thing as a D. We choose D because, uh, you know, intermediate positive pressure ventilation over intubation. Correct? Why not only analgesic here? The analgesic is not only here because th the breathing has become labored. If your patient is stable, in that case, you can use this thing, the analgesic only. I hope that is clear to all of you. So the next page will give you from the Oxford Handbook of Surgery more clear ideas you can see. More clear ideas you can see that uh, analgesic if breathing is not compromised. If breathing compromised, intubation with positive pressure ventilation or positive pressure ventilation better. Okay. So positive pressure ventilation, that is more required actually. Let's make a summary finally here. Let's make a summary here actually. Summary here for a frail chest. I'll make it easy now, no worries. So for a frail chest management, vital, stable. Now you'll be given, you know, X-ray or CT. You'll get to know it is frail chest. So vitally, if it is stable, in that case, your answer is a anal Jessic. Clear? Now, if vital, unstable. How do I know vital is unstable? There's a four parameters. But also here, breathing is important. Breathing, unstable. Or labored breathing. Is analgesic is enough here? No. We need something extra. So, IP, PV is best here actually. IP, PV over intubation. I, intubation, this uh, IPPV has a sustained uh, flow, like an automated car versus a manual car. Uh, yeah, so that's more like that, actually. So it has more sustained things, actually, IPPV. So it's more safe, actually, compared to the intubation. It, it can itself cause a lot of lung injuries, things. So IPPV is more better. Okay, so IPPV is the choice in that case. I hope it is clear now to the dear doctors, like when to choose what. I hope it is clear. Please do let me know in the comment section, if it is clear to all of you, correct? And you can be given pictures like this, like say this kind of picture, we can clearly see pneumothorax, correct? They can directly give you the CT scan. This CT scan, unfortunately, not so clear. I'll give you a website name, Radiopedia. Guys, please take, type this one, Radio. Pedia. From radiology to radiopedia. So you'll see more clear views. So file chest and type radiopedia. You'll find more clear view of CT scans. CT scan is very common in those countries like UK. I mean, in our country, because of cost and all this thing, you know, we thought of doing extra first. But in UK, everything is under the NHS, right? So it's on all on NHS. And even if you do individually x-ray privately, it also cost high. So not too huge difference between CT scan and an x-ray there actually. So that is one of the reasons, you know, don't hesitate recommending patient for a CT scan. Okay. So this is important. Next thing that is coming up is another question. Is a 55-year-old presence with an accident and emergency after a road traffic accident, breathlessness, engorged neck pain on percussion and you know right side with chest pain on examination is pulse is this what is the most likely diagnosis what do you think please check the vital please check what is important parameter given percussion note is given so many of you are with this thing that well done tension pneumothorax no. 
Great. Now, in our countries, there's a very popular product we called bash or bamboo, whatever we say. Now, many of you are thinking this is a tension pneumothorax, right? Dull on is pneumothorax finding is a dull. What do you think? Is pneumothorax finding is a dull? What do you think, guys? <laughs> Not really, right? So this must be something. So maybe it suddenly looks like tension and tension pneumothorax also has, you know, sudden more severe things actually. All right. And mediastinal shifting is another feature. So feature looks like pneumothorax, but dial on percussion, what is the diagnosis? The diagnosis is a hemothorax here. Clear guys? So this is a, like a self-induced bamboo, which you guys give yourself here. We can see that. Okay. So anyways, so the, how do you feel, you know, you know, by giving yourself self-induced self bamboo? Now, these are the thing you have to be careful, you know, in the main exam. Okay? Don't make mistakes next time. Certain few things which comes in exam in many way, like, you know, finding of a pneumothorax reduced on the affected side, percussion note has to be hyper resonant. Okay. In hemothorax, percussion note is at all. Treatment of new, uh, tension pneumothorax, needle thoracostomy or insertion of the needle in the second intercostal space. All right. Then for regular pneumothorax means close or open pneumothoraxes, we eventually keep chest drain. Special suggestion for pneumothorax cases, avoid air travel. Sometimes, you know, a different sort of question that comes and they will ask you, what do you recommend among those features? What do you recommend? So air travel, underwater driving, because your lung could be in serious trouble, right? So not much recommended. So these are certain special notes. This all has been tested in exam. Keep this thing in mind, okay? So this is like an important correlation of lot of things related to pneumothorax. Clear everyone? I hope you find that one useful. Next important question. 34 year old man presents with a truncal obesity, easy bruising, hyperglycemia, high blood pressure, depression, which is the following investigation most helpful, you know, for a diagnosing a Cushing syndrome. So a few words, truncal obesity is already you see the scenario and finally they're asking, this is Cushing syndrome. Sometimes they might not tell you this is Cushing, but when you see the stems, you understand this is Cushing. Great. Now, five seconds for answering this one. Someone asked for is a question, what is the treatment for hemothorax for last one? Same thing, guys. You know, it's a chest drain. Yes, it's a chest drain. Correct. Okay, now coming to this question, which is a question 31, like, you know, what is the investigation for Cushing syndrome? So in that case, you know, ideal would be to go with a high dose dexamethasone suppression test. Now, in between two of these tests, which give you more uh, versatile option? Is it the high dose will give you more idea or a low dose will give you more clear idea? So definitely the high dose dexamethasone suppression test gives you more clear idea, right? Now, why find out in the next page? This is a very classic. How many of you have seen this picture before? The very classic Davidson picture like moon face, buffalo hum, uh, you know, high blood pressure, obesity. Please do let me know in the comment section how many of you have seen this in past, this particular picture. I'm sure most of you. Now, in that one, you know, uh, forget about that picture, like coming to this one, the high dose dexamethasone suppression. High dose dexamethasone suppression can identify your secondary option if it is because of a pituitary or is it because of a lung cancer. This will give you a more clear view. This will give you a more clear view. Because high dose will not be able to suppress uh, the ectopic. Ectopic means because of lung you know, from lung ACTH, from ACTH, more cortisol. From lung, also produce, like, which lung cancer 
produces SCTH. Last day we discussed, it is a small cell cancer, which is called ectopic production, and it is huge production. So the question is, high dose dexamethasone can suppress that one. High dose dexamethasone by negative feedback can suppress that one. Answer is a no. Okay, so the ectopic they cannot suppress, but the typical Cushing disease they manage to suppress the high dose. And this is why high dose dexamethasone will give you more clear view in differentiating a lot of Cushing's. Okay. Great. So you need to practice this one a little bit, like you know, low dose Cushing, high dose Cushing. As a as a good doctor, as a good practice, it's also very important. You know, your supervisor will be highly impressed if you really know low dose dexamethasone, high dose dexamethasone, these particular things and which one is interpreted what. It is very, very important. I'm, I'm telling one more time, high dose dexamethasone, when we give, it manages to suppress the typical Cushing syndrome diseases, but can't suppress the ectopic because ectopic has too much secretion. So you are giving like a, this amount. It can't suppress it actually. Okay. In case of ectopic. Example, it comes from the lung. Moving forward or any more questions? Let me see our doctors has any question or not. I hope you are enjoying um, this particular section. Those of you joined late, you know, guys, you know, we have almost this six years, six years of the recalls and all these things are given. And the six years collection, which includes 2023 is ongoing, 2022, 2021, 2020, then 2019, 2018. All right. So even 2017, you know, not much recommended. Not much recommended, but these particular things, if you have more time exam on maybe after three, four months then, and but if you have exam next month, in that case, you at least need to finish this um, current three years or if possible four years, actually, this will create high chance if you, if you see our videos like this. So those packages we are giving includes video at the same time, solved files. Okay, together. And also there is includes, you know, hot topics. For example, just while ago we discussed the dementia, just while ago we discussed, you know, uh, another day, chest pain. So all these, you know, special topics with a lot of differential diagnosis and DDs have been discussed and very high chances to come to the main exam. All right. So please make sure, you know, you see those things very well, actually. Okay, great. So if you want to recommend any of your friend, you know, this is our uh, WhatsApp number. You can just share it to them, actually. You know, uh, in our country, like, you know, people, you know, try their maximum not to recommend. Um, rather than that is one of the reason probably in our lot of franchises, we get other countries doctor more uh, than our local community doctors, actually. Yes. So that is the thing because we believe that you know, you're going to uh, recommend and things like that. Yeah. All right. So it's a small request that, you know, if you find things useful, explanation are good compared to you find some other teachers, do not try. I mean, try to recommend and try to share one to videos because many juniors are very confused with so all the time. So uh, any videos or any at least career guideline videos can be very useful for them. Let's move forward to the next segment. And thank you those who are joining. Um, through the um, YouTube or Facebook. Yeah, thank you so much. And we will continue.